In a high-pressure, safety-driven environment like an air traffic control tower, employees must retain constant vigilance. After all, effective communications between aircraft and the tower can ensure the safety of those on board planes and those on the ground in their general area. In March 2011, air traffic control was absent as two aircraft had to land unassisted in Washington. The reason? A controller had fallen asleep. Let's take a look back at this alarming incident and what circumstances led to it. The incident took place early on Wednesday, March 23, 2011. According to NBC, the first flight that encountered a lack of response from the tower at Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport, or DCA, was American Airlines Flight 1012. This was followed shortly afterward by United Flight 628T. Upon realizing that there was no reply from the tower, the flights initially circled near the airport, using this time to try and elicit some form of response. However, with the controller on duty having fallen asleep, their only point of contact was with a regional ATC facility in Warrenton, Virginia. This facility also tried to contact the tower by phone, but to no avail. As such, both aircraft made decisions to land unassisted. With aviation being a safety-driven industry, there were some fail-safe elements in place. At the time, FAA Administrator Randy Babbitt explained, At no point was either plane out of radar contact, and our backup system kicked in to ensure the safe landing of both airplanes. While the pair of aircraft landed safely, a lack of ATC support at this active airport could have proven very dangerous. Fatigue clearly played a role in what happened, with media noting that it was the controller's fourth consecutive overnight shift. It wasn't the case of a rookie mistake, as he had worked in the domain of air traffic control for 20 years, with 17 of these years being at Washington National. In any case, the controller was suspended pending an investigation which prompted an upheaval in staffing protocols. Indeed, the reason for the radio silence was the fact that the sleeping controller was the only person present in the tower at the time. As such, then-Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood mandated a second controller when it came to overnight shifts at the US Capitol's secondary airport. The incident highlighted a worrying wider trend concerning incidents involving air traffic controllers who hadn't had sufficient rest between shifts. While a controller falling asleep on the job was more or less unheard of, a 2007 letter to the FAA from then-NTSB Chairman Mark Rosenker highlighted four near-misses involving underslept air traffic controllers. These occurred between July 2001 and March 2006, with certain aircraft having been as little as 12 seconds away from a collision. In these instances, the controllers on duty had had between two and six hours of sleep between shifts, with one having worked three times in two days. These instances underline the importance of sufficient rest periods in safety-critical roles, of which the airline industry has many. What do you make of this incident? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.